In this video, I'll show you how to inflate a tire. I will show you close-ups of the valve, close-ups of the tire gauge and how to read it, and I'll show you how it's done. First off, the valve. You have a valve like so. Inside the wheel, you can see the top of it. Take the valve cap off, and this is what's inside the wheel. This lower uh, bulging part, part is inside, so you can only see this much of the valve. This valve has in the middle of it a little round feature there. It's called the valve stem. You can, uh, it's spring loaded and you can push it in like so and you can see that it's moving up and down. This is how air is kept in or let out from this valve. If you over inflate your tire you just press down on the valve stem and you can let some of the air out. The tire gauge in its normal operation has a little round feature in its middle which also presses on the valve stem so, uh, so it lets some air out and it's possible to take a reading with the tire gauge. The uh, inflator uh, tool here also has a little round feature in the middle which also depresses the valve stem so it can uh, force some air into the tire. So that's how the valve stem works. Now let's see the gauge itself. Uh, let me just find the gauge. I've got two uh, analog gauges here because <clears throat> it's important that the uh, tire be inflated and deflated and measured accurately for the measurement for the accuracy of measurements it's important that you have that little round part in the middle and it's not broken off you also need that black round seal in the pressure gauge sometimes from some cheap pressure gauges that little round seal falls out so you can see that we have it in that one we have it in this one and we also have something like that in uh, this one. This is a digital one. I'll show you how it works. But these analog ones are the ones that, that you uh, find most often. In it there's a calibrated piece of plastic stick and uh, this one uh, tells you what is the unit of measurement on this one. This says pounds. pounds. Uh, what it means is PSI. PSI stands for pounds per square inch. So that's what uh, this measures and you can see it is 5, 10, 15 and between those numbers there is uh, little hair lines without uh, numerical digits so that would be 11 PSI, 12, 13, 14 and you take a reading at the base of it, of the uh, tire gauge so this one reads now 15 PSI as is this one reads 16 PSI. This one is 16 and a half if you want to go super accurate. That's seven, 17 PSI there. So that's how it goes. Normal tire pressure is somewhere around 30, 31, 32, uh, maybe 35, maybe as low as 28, depending on what you do. This one here goes up to 50. And this is a low pressure tire gauge. This one is uh, a high pressure tire gauge and it works for uh, say bicycles and it's got four, a four sided uh, scale on it. You can see it goes up to 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 100 psi, 110, 120. But it's read the same way as anything else, as the previous one. So that would be 80 psi on this one. Let me see how many dots are there. One, two, three, four dots. So that would be 82 psi there on the dot. That's 84 psi, 86 psi. So it needs a little uh, uh, TLC and attention, but they work wonderfully well. And then here is this one. I found it in uh, a bicycle store, and it works wonderfully well. You switch it on. That was my last reading. Just 
zero it down. Oops. Just a sec. That's not a good reading. There, that's a good reading. Press it against it tight. Keep the valve stem pressed in. And it does lose a little bit of air that you can hear when you uh, push the gauge on and when you remove the gauge as well. So this one has 30.6 30 PSI in it. Just wait for the camera to focus. There it says 30.6 PSI. So this tire is uh, fairly, fairly well inflated. Now, if say this tire is overinflated, just let some of the air out with a piece of stone or a piece of a wooden stick or something. However, don't jam anything in there uh, that will uh, <coughs> that will uh, interfere with the uh, normal operation of the valve. Okay, so if you leave some dirt in it, uh, you're not going to be too happy with it. So that's why I like a nice uh, clean, clean piece of stone. Let's see what the pressure is now. There, with this little bit, I went down to 28.1. Now one more thing about when you use the tire gauge. You have to put the tire gauge on the valve squarely from both ways. From this way and from this way. If it's off like so, it's gonna leak out air because this will depress the valve stem but it will not seal properly. So uh, they have to be square both ways, this way and this way. Same principles apply to this one. It has to be square on the stem both ways and I mean square to the seal. The seal should be square to the valve stem. So it doesn't matter which you can see that the that the seal here and the uh, gauge itself have a little bit of an angle in between uh, where it is square is here at the top at where the valve stem and the seal meet. They should be square here. Because if it's off like this way or this way or this way or this or this way it will kind of work, somewhat work, but not really. It has to be on, sorry, squarely. And with a little bit of a practice, you can find a point where it doesn't leak. There, I have 20. Uh, now it's down to 23 PSI. Okay. And to inflate it, just put the, put the inflator tool on. And again, this is not inflating it, this is not on squarely. This is hissing air out from the tire, it's not on squarely. It should be on something like that. Let's see what we did here. Switch this one on. I like this digital, this is the easiest to read. Alrighty, 33.7. That's pretty close. One last thing about tire pressure. You can see your uh, tire pressure imprinted on the tire. Let's see, just wait for the camera to focus. Let's see if you can read it. Yes, tire failure, failure due to underinflated, underinflation slash over, overloading. Uh, okay, it starts here. Sorry. Safety warning. Serious injury may result from tire failure due to underinflation or overloading. Read tires man. Uh, read follow owner's manual or tire placard in vehicle, and it says never inflate beyond 40 psi. Okay. And also on your door, on your driver's side door, you have a sticker here that says, maybe I'll turn it this way, it tells you the tire pressure in uh, various uh, units. There's a PSI in the sec first bracket, second bracket it says PSI, so go for the second bracket, 32 PSI for front, 32 PSI for rear. But sometimes uh, tires are uh, changed and they don't come with the same 
tire anymore that they were originally manufactured with. So the sticker on the door is uh, irrelevant, but uh, you might find different numbers on your uh, tire. But uh, by and large, most tires top out at 40 psi or 45 psi. Anything beyond is uh, dangerously overinflated and uh, might roll off the rim, particularly when you. Uh, when you drive over something sharp like a curb or something like that. Okay, so practice it a little bit at a gas station uh, and uh, keep your tires inflated.